Hello everyone and welcome. Today we are going to blink an LED on our STM thirty uh, STM eight S one hundred three F three blue pill board, and we are going to flash this LED on five hundred millisecond delay rate with the help of timer four. Uh, we are going to use timer four in the STM eight, and we are not going to use the interrupt of this timer. There are two ways to use this timer uh, either with the interrupt or without interrupt. So we are going to use the method without interrupt. We are going to create delay MS and delay mic uh, US functions for uh, creating delays of millisecond and one microsecond. So we will be creating two functions for uh, delay micro, uh, microsecond delay and millisecond delay. Timers are the built-in peripheral in any microcontroller that, that help you to create timing events. Uh, we need to, uh, to find out uh, what these timers are and where they locate in the actual SFR memory and what registers they have. We need two things for this. One is the data sheet of the microcontroller that we are using and second is the reference manual for that family. We are using STM 8 as family, so we had opened the reference manual RM0016, which is for uh, STM 8 as microcontroller family reference manual. Second thing uh, we opened is the data sheet of the microcontroller. First of all, we uh, need to scroll down and see what timer ti uh, we have in this microcontroller. So in this timer section, it says that advanced control timer of 16. 16 bit uh, which have has the capcom channels and three complementary outputs dead time insertion and flexible synchronization so this advanced timer will be very helpful if you are generating a uh, um, three phase induction motor control or uh, sine wave inverter like application so this advanced control timer will help you there um, the second timer is 16 bit general purpose timer. This general purpose timer will help you to create ca uh, compare and capture options or PWM related applications. The thing that we are using is 8 bit basic timer with 8 bit prescaler. So this timer is we are going to use which is basically a basic timer and will help us to create a de accurate delays. Instead of using a software delay with the help of for loop, we need we can use the 8-bit basic timer delays to generate an accurate delay. If you are coming from Arduino background, you may be familiar with this uh, uh, delay uh, microsecond uh, delay function, uh, which use inbuilt uh, timer zero for creating the accurate delay, and it also has delay microsecond function, which help you to create the delays for microsecond. So we are going to replicate that two functions in our STM8 Cosmic C compiler. And uh, I need to uh, mention here that I'm going to use Cosmic C compiler and going to create the application in C language. I am going to cover the uh, assembly uh, language related application uh, in next video. So please subscribe if you haven't subscribed so that you may also be aware about the assembly language. Now, if we scroll down in this data sheet and uh, uh, jump to the timer section and uh, see if we, ha we have the timer section in the data sheet or we have to look into the uh, reference manual if we do not find in here. Okay, in the data sheet, we see that it has timer one, which is 16 bit advanced control timer. It means that timer one and two and four. This microcontroller have three timers, which is timer one, timer two and timer four. Timer 4 is 8-bit basic timer. So if we uh, jump to this location and click on the timer 4 8-bit basic timer, it says that it has 8-bit 8 8-bit 8 auto reload value, adjustable prescaler ratio from any 2 to uh, power of 2 from 1 to 2, uh, 128. So it means that we have two register at least, one for auto reload value and second for prescaler. So with this line of information, we got two things about the timer. We know two things about the timer. One is that we have some kind of reload register and we have some kind of prescaler register. So these two registers, we need to find out the name of these registers. The second thing that we need to uh, find out is about the uh, information that it uh, this time in this table we uh, see, we can see that timer four can go up 
it means that it only count upwards so it do not count downwards like timer one so move on to the reference manual of stm 8s family and scroll down until you find the timer four if you scroll all the way down with the timer overview sections you got that 16 bit advanced control timer which is timer one and uh, if you scroll further down you will see that general purpose timer could be of timer two timer three or timer five you need to find out which timer your microcontroller have in our case of stm32 f103 micro uh, stm uh, stm8 s103 microcontroller we have timer two on this microcontroller and timer 4 the 8 bit basic timer could be timer 4 or timer 6 in our microcontroller we have timer 4 so we need to find out about the timer 4 there uh, in, on the page of 260 you find registers about the timer 4 uh, so we need to find uh, here just like any peripheral this timer also have control register we are going to use the control bits about it the bits from 4 to 6 are reserved bits so we are not going to change that bits any anyway so we are going to use bit 7 and bit 0 or bit 2 so uh, let's see what bit 2 says that it says that update request so when this bit is 1 it uh, generates an update interrupt request is sent only when the counter reach the overflow so update will only be sent when the counter uh, goes to overflow and if this bit is 0 an update interrupt is uh, sent as soon as the register are updated the uh, least significant bit which is bit 0 it is a counter enable so if you put zero to this bit the counter will be disabled and your timer will not going to generate any timing and when you need to enable the timer you need to set this bit so that was about the control register of timer cr1 uh, cr2 register is not available in uh, timer 1 it is available in timer 2 uh, when you the slave mode register we are not going to use uh, in this timer in slave mode so we skip this interrupt enable register it has only one bit available to read or write and uh, this bit uh, all the other bits are reserved so this register a uh, least significant bit which is bit zero if it leave zero it will update interrupt disable it will disable the interrupt and if you set this bit it will enable the interrupt so because we are going we are not going to use interrupt in this tutorial this bit will remain zero in sr1 register you have a bit of uif which says that interrupt update interrupt flag this is a flag which could be uh, cleared by the software so that further interrupts could be enabled and in the event generate, uh, generation register which is EGR register you also have just one bit which is UG or least significant bit all the other uh, high bits from 1 to 7 are reserved and you cannot change the value of these bits or you just can change the value of the least bit and if it is 0 no action will be taken but if this bit is 1 it reinitialize everything and you are ready to regenerate the same timing that you've done before and here you have your actual counter register you need to uh, if uh, in our case but what we are going to use we need to keep track of this counter value until we reach the uh, available value we required and here you have a prescaler register which stands for PSCR and here you can see that uh, the uh, zero uh, the bit from th uh, three to seven are reserved and you only have option to change bit zero to two and uh, if you uh, put appropriate value in these three bits you can uh, set the uh, prescaler for this timer and uh, this prescaler will uh, help with the timer egr register psc uh, contains the value which will be loaded in the active prescaler register so this holds the value which will be loaded in the prescaler and that will divide the clock with 
that value and including when the count uh, when the counter is cleared through ug bit and if the counter is cleared with the ug bit a of the timer for egr register okay this means that an update event must be generated in or in order that a new prescaler value can be taken into account so every time you uh, set the value from the ug bit or from the egr register you are actually reloading the prescaler value and here you have a reload value which will be reloaded into the counter whenever the counter reinitialize from the overflow so the, uh, there you have a summary of all the registers you can uh, go through uh, with all 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 registers you have total 7 registers and 3 of them only have one bit to change and one is a control register and uh, in down you have a counter register which you need to keep track of the value and prescaler and auto reload so these three registers are very easy to remember that one is for reload value one is for prescaler value and one is for counter value and one is for interrupt and one is for control so a three and two five registers are easy to follow if you have sr1 register you need to keep track when interrupt is uh, occurred so this is to keep track that an interrupt uh, the uh, event is updated or overflowed and the egr register is going to update the uh, reinitialize the counter so uh, there are these are the register maps and here you have the addresses of all these registers if you are using these registers in assembly language all you need to do you need to uh, know the, the uh, actual uh, physical address of these registers in the memory so let's move on to the stvd and see what uh, the code we had written we created these three functions a delay initialization function which is actually initializing the timer for the second is the delay microsecond function which will only taking 0 to 255 value so the delay that you can get from this uh, function is a, a range from 0 to 255 microsecond delay and with the help of this uh, microsecond delay function we had created a delay millisecond function which will uh, create the millisecond delay and in the main loop we initialized over timer and then we initialize over uh, onboard led which is connected to pb5 mean port b and pin 5 we just uh, in the ddr register we set a, a fifth bit of this register to denote that we are going to use this bit as an output and in the control register we add a set the bit, uh, fifth bit to indicate that we, we are going to use this bit in a push pull manner and finally we cleared the value on the odr just to denote that we are uh, enabling the led because our onboard led is configured in common anode mode it does writing a zero to that bit will turn that led on in the while loop we x or the fifth bit it will toggle the led and we take we take 500 millisecond delay if you come down in the delay initialization function what we done is we put a 0 1 in prescaler register this is the first thing that we done which will actually divide over 2 megahertz clock with 2 and uh, the result will be 1 megahertz clock so now you have 1 megahertz clock it means that every count will take 1 microsecond so whatever value you provide in a counter register and the counter will count from 0 to that uh, range of value uh, that number of microsecond delay you get so uh, you may already guess that in timer uh, delay microsecond whatever delay value we required we put that we keep track of the counter to reach that number get back to delay initialization the second thing we reloaded with the ff so whenever this uh, timer will reinitialize it will go from uh, ff to zero and count uh, start counting from zero to that value so the next thing is we cleared everything in the 
a CR1 register, it means that we are we force this timer to be disabled for now. And we enabled the second bit, bit which will say which says that only update when overflow. And the next thing we disabled everything in EGR register. It means we are currently not using the timer and we uh, cleared the counter and we also cleared the interrupt. So the main thing that we are using here is we are disabling the timer for now until we use it and we putting prescaler to this timer and a reload value. These two informations are actually going to be utilized whenever over timer is counting in delay us function. In delay us function all we do is set the EGR value so that uh, over prescaler value and counter value is reinitialized to zero. After that we are enabling the timer it will goes from uh, 255 to zero and then we wait until our timer counter reach the, va uh, uh, the value we required and after our timer counter value reach up to that value we are going to disable the timer by writing a zero to the last bit least significant bit or the zeroth bit of time for underscore cr1 register and after that we are clearing that counter register of that timer so that function is going to uh, give us a microsecond delay we required and the last thing we are just clearing the flag which is the update flag in a delay millisecond when we want to create a millisecond delay all we are going to use that we are multiplying the time with the 10 and we are uh, taking uh, 100 microsecond delay 10th time multiplied with the time and because we know that uh, 1 millisecond is equal to 1000 microsecond so if we are taking 100 microsecond delay we need to take 100 microsecond delay 10 times to reach to 1 millisecond so that we what we doing in the delay millisecond function so that's all for timer 4 using the timer 4 without interrupt in stm8s microcontroller so thank you so much and stay tuned